Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, precision agriculture. I think many speakers, you know, early this morning have spoken quite eloquently on this, on this, on this topic. The question is, what is the CSR bringing to the table? I think I would rather ask another question. Why is the rate of adoption of precision agriculture in South Africa and Africa as a whole still very, very low compared to the rest of the world. You know, a variety of answers have been, have been given to this question. Farmers still perceive, you know, technology as expensive. Farmers and other stakeholders in the agri sector are not very sure about the real benefits of precision agriculture. Are we sure our farmers can afford the tools and devices, smartphones, and all you know, the beautiful gadgets that we have? So these and many other things you know, are hindering the adoption of precision agriculture. And that's why the CSR is involved in precision ag agriculture, to make a contribution to make this technology available to everyone. We are a group of remote sensing scientists. These are guys, men and women trained in the art of interpreting satellite imagery and data from all kinds of, of, of uh, remote sensors. So we are a team of remote sensing scientists. And you agree with me that within the past 30 years, the world has been provided with all kinds of satellite imagery, from your Landsat imagery to current and tem contemporary imagery like Sentinel-2, Sentinel-1, the Sentinel series from the European Space Agency. And more and more sensors are being launched into, into orbit. You have private commercial sensors from Digital uh, Globe or Maxa, and so, Newer and newer sensors are being released into space. The question is, should we in South Africa or Africa adopt algorithms and routines that have been developed in Europe and the US or in Asia and apply them to our landscapes? From where we sit, the answer is probably no, because the African landscape is different. Our farming landscape is different. The mosaic of farm parcels in Africa is different. The kind of crops we grow and the varieties are different from your cassava to your sorghum, and you can, you can name the rest, are different. So we need dedicated scientists, we need dedication, dedicated application developers to look at the sensor data, the avalanche of remote sensing data that we have, and develop algorithms that work for our landscapes. That's why our group is, is, is involved. And my presentation would be presented within the context of you know, the emerging challenges in the agri sector, the opportunities, and precision agriculture as uh, you know, one of the desired technology interventions. And I will end with one uh, uh, example. Now, let's, let's look at the drought situation in Southern Africa. Whether we like it or not, climate, climate change and variability is around us, or is with us. If you look at those, those maps, those are maps of drought severity in Southern Africa within the past uh, almost uh, 20 years. That's the month of December. So we've mapped drought severity for every December. And just to compare the severity across the uh, sub-region, uh, the bigger map there, that's the map of December 2015. It was the driest December in, in the past uh, almost 30 years. The red indicate extreme, extreme drought. And you can see the variability in the month of December. For a maize farmer, that's not good at all, because they expect good rains in the month of December. That's when the crops are in the you know, exponential phase of growth. But look at this sort of variability. How would our emerging farmers, how would our small farmers cope with this kind of variability? That's a big question. Now, in December 2015, you know, as soon as we got wing of you know, the intensity of the drought, we produced that data. And it caught a lot of attention of the media and the public. 
and lots of newspapers and, and public media and private media wrote uh, about the drought situation in, in South Africa from the work that our group did. And if you look at the figures, look at maize production in the country. The free state is you know, the highest producer of maize. Look at maize production in 2013-14, over 6 million tons of maize produced, and that drastically dropped to barely 2 million tons in 2014-2015 and 2015-2016. That's the impact of, 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 of drought on, on maize production in the country. And we just recently published a paper. I mean, everybody is talking about emerging farmers, small-scale farmers to medium-scale farmers. They should be involved and so forth. But we are not paying attention to the plight that those farmers are facing. If you look at, we just published a paper on farm abandonment in the country. Many small and medium-scale farmers are abandoning the fields because the fields are no longer productive. They cannot meet up with the cost of production because of this climate variability and the impact it's having on, on agriculture. New challenges. The fall armyworm affecting our maize crops. You can see this, are, this is a picture we took just two weeks ago from a maize farm. Wheat, invasive wheat, and our farmers don't understand where this uh, weed are coming from. They need help. And so, in 2015, when we published the paper on the drought impact in South Africa, uh, the Standard Bank wrote uh, a kind of policy brief. And citing you know, the information we provided, uh, Carl Good made this statement. The challenges also present an opportunity for entrepreneurs, similar to the establishment of the solar industry. There is a business case to diversify and create a new industry to provide more water saving solutions. The knock on effect on business will be enormous if solutions are not found. Businesses can close down if they don't have water. He says, according to Gute, companies need to work in partnership with the sector and commercial specialists to begin the process of change. And we picked on this message at the CSIR and we wanted to be part of the solution. And we defined for ourselves the following mission. We want to transform agricultural production in the region through innovative and adaptive earth observation technologies and Internet of Things. We have all this data from the, uh, uh, NASA, from US, American USGS, and European Space Agency given to us for free. 10 years ago or 15 years ago when I was in a PhD program, if you told me that we'll have data at 10 meters resolution, 13 bands, with bands in the red edge spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum, I would tell you no, we would, we would not have that data for free because then we bought Landsat data, seven bands. But today we have this data for free. Why not make good use of this data and provide that intelligence to, to our farmers? The goal, therefore, is to supply or to support industries along the whole agricultural value chain with actionable farm level data. I would like to underline farm-level data because, you know, there are lots of products out there that provide regional information on, on climate variability and the impact on, on crop production, your sorghum, your maize, and so forth. But at the farm level, we don't have information. And so we want to support, you know, the sector with farm-level intelligence to enable precision agriculture and cost-effective business decisions at all levels of the value chain. What about the ones supplying seeds? You want to know how many farmers are growing uh, 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 maize and number of hectares and, and where you know, the seeds are required. You want to know where you know, fertilizers and your NPK is required and what quantity and so forth. So we, we want to help everybody. And we define what we call the precision agriculture circle, where you know, what is precision agriculture is about you know, observing, measuring, and responding to within and between field variability. And at the CSIR, we've developed our capability in interpreting all kinds of remote sensing data from your LiDAR data, that's an example there, hyperspectral data, and synthetic aperture radar, who produced you know, the state-of-the-art map of South Africa in terms of grass nutrient quality across the country, biomass uh, of, of woody vegetation across the country, using a combination of LiDAR and synthetic aperture radar. We want to extend this technology into the agricultural sector. And when you do that, then the farmers can actually start to engage in precision management. And this is an example. It cuts down on cost of applic fertilizer application, for example. And you get more money into your pocket, and that will reinforce uh, the precision management. And so 
The question is, why is the adoption rate still low? We think that one, one of the you know, reasons is the kind of information that is available out there. We've defined four levels of precision agriculture information. Level one, you have your you know, or satellite imagery and basic indices that are derived from there. Anybody with basic training in remote sensing and GIS is able to download images and generate such data. But level two data to produce data on the soil and crop, uh, you know, parameters, you need to calibrate the remote sensing uh, 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 image. You need field data. You need to work with our farmers to gather a lot of field data to build those intelligence models that we are, we are all talking about. And you need to then, you know, interpret that data to detect areas of stress levels in the farm, your soil moisture stress, your crop stress, and you have level four data where you need to give recommendations to farmers, you know, where should you apply your fertilizer in what quantity and so forth. Now we are talking about emerging farmers. I, I want to believe that there are some of you seated in the room there, you, you are working in other sectors, but you want to invest in the agricultural sector. You may have a large farm in the Eastern Cape. How do you manage that farm? You can sit in your office and receive information about, you know, whether your farm has been prepared, been tilled. You, you can receive information about the variability of soil, nutrient levels and moisture, and what quantity of fertilizers and, you know, water irrigation is needed. And you can send back that information to your farm workers and they can, they can respond to that information and act on it. That's the, what we're talking about. And so at the CSIR, we're going into details. We're going down to the field. We're measuring all the crop essential parameters for the various crops, major crops that are produced in the country. And we're looking at the relationship between how these parameters evolve with time and your remote sensing imagery. Mark you a sensor like Sentinel-2. We have data on every spot on Earth after every five days. The revisit time is five days, very high fre frequency. We're also looking at drone data, high resolution data. Look at, look at this drone image of a, of a maize field. This was January uh, uh, 7, 17 this year. You can basically see every row from, of, of, of the maize farm. We can calculate the density of, uh, of, of, of maize uh, stems. We can tell you the amount of chlorophyll there in, the, in the leaves. We can tell you, give you information about the moisture stress of the plants. And you, just looking at the slides, you, 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 can, you can see gaps in the field. And some of those gaps are caused by, you know, the tractor pulling down the, the maize stems. These are things that we, we, we witness in the field. But if you don't, you are not on the ground, you may not have that, that sort of information. And I was talking to uh, my colleague Wayne of uh, John Derry, and he was saying sometimes about the management of the tractors. The farmers are not well capacitated on how to, to, to manage the, the, the tractors. So those are all sort of information that we need. Look at the sort of variability in the maize farm. You have bare areas, you have a lot of patches, and so forth. And our farmer, we, the, farm, the, the farm owner here, tells me he wakes up in the morning and he looks at the farm from the side and it looks like everything is, is, is fine. But we are on the field measuring, collecting data at leaf level, at you know, just above canopy level, the drone data, and, the, and with the sat satellite. That's an example, interpretation of that drone image there, and we can generate a map of, you know, variabilities in canopy chlorophyll content. And you can see where the chlorophyll contents are high and where, where it's low. Some of it here, it's actually due to weed infestation. So we are also looking at, you know, the spectral response of, of weed so that we're able to map uh, weed presence in the field. And we can produce now data on a weekly basis and actually help the, the farmers with, with weekly information, you can follow the growth of the, cro the, the crop and see where it peaks, you know, stress uh, weeks and stress areas, and the farmers can actually then start to apply precision management. Now, look at scaling from your drone, for example, to your satellite data, Sentinel-2 data. You can see here the resolution, the spatial resolution is quite high. Here is coarse, but, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, the correlation between your drone data at 20 centimeters resolution and your Sentinel at 10 meters resolution. So we're looking at how we scale, you know, from very high resolution data to, a, to, to, to satellite data, which, you know, uh, comes at virtually no cost. You can see the correlation with one of the most popular vegetation indices there, the NDVI. And it doesn't end there. What do the farmers think about 
this kind of information. So we co-developing this with the farmers. We go down to the field, we talk to them, we take the products to them. Before we indulge ourselves in developing automated systems, we need to understand how the farmers would interpret this data. What are their visual requirements? What kind of format do they want the data to be presented to them? Can they interpret maps when we produce maps with those varying colors? Do they understand it? And so every two weeks, we go down with the products to the farmers and we talk to them. So here you find our maize farmer, you find our drone provider, you have CSR scientists, and you can find a farmer relating with the data, giving his understanding of the data. And from there, we're gathering intelligence. And we would use that intelligence to build the, the, the models. So precision agriculture holds huge promise for revolutionizing the agri sector. But we all have to, to work together and make the cost as low as possible and reasonable. I would end with a challenge. We think that the cost of producing satellite-based information, I mean detailed information, not only information about the NDVI, or those we can rapidly generate from radiative transfer and physical-based models, but detailed structural and biochemical information about the plants to the farmers at a very, very low cost. I challenge all the actors in precision agriculture. Can we generate this information at a run per hectare? So that this our farmer who owns about 150 hectares of maize, can in a month, let's assume that he's we're generating information from Sentinel-2 and Sentinel-1 imagery, which is free. If we can generate such information, and in a month he's spending about 200 rands to get such data on his mobile phone, in a growing season for his 150 hectares, if he's spending a thousand rands, he may not feel it, but he's getting information that would improve his management. And with that, we can convince many more farmers to use the information. And for maize production, for example, in the free state, probably we have more than a million hectares of maize farm a million times Iran is 10 million. That's the challenge I'll leave the audience with. Thank you very much. <laughs>